Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show some super macro images of octopus eyes taken on recent dive trips at the Blue Heron Bridge in South Florida. I think this, these images are not only beautiful, but they're fascinating from a biological standpoint. Let's check it out. Octopuses are invertebrates with very different evolutionary origins than fishes, which are vertebrates like us. The last common ancestor of octopuses and fishes several hundred million years ago had a very simple eye with probably extremely poor vision. However, over a great deal of time, selection pressure to have good vision and thrive in the watery world led to both octopuses and fishes independently evolving complex, highly effective, and amazingly similar eyes. It's fascinating. Let's check it out. First of all, for most of these super macro images, I used a Nikon D7100 Ike Light housing and single Ike Light strobe. You can see how for super macro the strobe must be pulled in tight, very close to the port. Here's an image of the 1.4x teleconverter and the 60mm macro lens that I uh, used. And here's the flat port with a retractable wet diopter lens attached, a plus 10 wet diopter lens. This image shows the camera in the housing, but now with the teleconverter added. In this image, the 60mm macro lens has now been added to the teleconverter, making the lens a little longer. This image shows the flat port now added with a retractable plus 10 sub-C wet diopter attached to the flat port. I needed a somewhat longer flat port to accommodate the longer lens setup with the teleconverter added. Let's check out some octopus eye images. Here's a front shot of the octopus eye showing tremendous detail and beauty. You can see the central dark pupil and the surrounding iris tissue. To get this close, I approached the animal very slowly and backed off when making camera or strobe adjustments so as not to frighten the animal. For super macro, there is minimal depth of field and you have to focus precisely. To do this, the animal and your camera must be still. This octopus was on the seafloor, which made it easy to hold the camera still. I slowly settled in on the seafloor and didn't have to worry about maintaining perfect buoyancy. Here's a side shot. You can see the cornea, which covers the front part of the eye like a crystal over a watch glass. You can see the iris and the round or spherical crystalline lens, which focuses light onto the retina, the back of the eye, which is like the film of a uh, camera. In octopuses, the cornea appears to be an extension of the eyelid, unlike a fish cornea. Even though the eye of an octopus and fish look very similar, both having a cornea, round lens, iris, pupil, and retina, on closer inspection, they are very different. Most fishes have a fixed dilated pupil, whereas octopuses can change their pupil size. This image was taken in dim light, and the pupil is widely dilated, large, and almost round, <clears throat> to allow light in dim conditions. For this image, I used a somewhat bright focus light to help me focus, and you can see that the pupil is now much smaller, almost slit-like in appearance, to limit incoming light. This amazing shot shows the round, large lens of the octopus eye. The lens is spherical, like in fish, and focuses light onto the retina. In this image, you can see part of the iris on the other side of the lens, refracted through the lens. Even though the shape and refractive strength of the lens of the octopus and fish eye is strikingly similar, on a closer look, the lenses are quite different, reflecting their different evolutionary origins. The octopus eye developed from skin tissue called ectoderm, and the fish eye comes from brain tissue called neuroectoderm, with only the lens of the fish eye coming from skin. The lens of the octopus eye is partially separated by a thin layer of skin tissue into a front and back half, whereas in the fish lens, it's completely surrounded by this thin skin tissue. Finally, the octopus lens is made of different proteins and crystallines than the fish lens. Very interesting. These next three shots show incredible detail of the iris and the adjacent skin of the octopus. Both the skin and iris of the octopus contain chromatophores. These are tiny pigment-filled bags which can expand and contract to reveal or conceal small dots of color, and they rapidly change color to mimic the animal's surroundings. It is fascinating that the iris and the skin look so similar as in this shot. But not too surprising since the eye of the octopus comes from skin, unlike fishes and other vertebrates where it comes from brain, neural tissue. 
Finally, I don't have images of the retina, which is at the back of the eye, but it is fascinating that the retina of the octopus and fish eye is different in many ways. The retina is oriented in opposite directions in fish and octopus, and the actual retinal photoreceptor cells are completely diff different. Also, fishes have color vision, but octopuses only see in black and white. This is a wonderful example of convergent evolution. The octopus and the fish came from very different evolutionary origins, but over many, many years, independently evolved highly effective and amazingly similar eyes in order to thrive in their underwater world. If you want to see more images and learn more about the eyes of aquatic animals, check out my book, The Aquatic Eye. It's available at Amazon, very inexpensive. I'm just trying to promote some awareness and knowledge of the beauty and diversity of the underwater world. Thanks a lot for your attention.